Today I'm gonna build a Lego security system to protect this Lego safe, which has an extremely rare minifigure inside it. And then I'm gonna test it out to see if I can actually stop a burglar I hired to try and steal the minifigure. And I'm putting the safe at the end of this room so we can build out the security system from there. Also, this video is sponsored by Shopify, but more on them later. First, I wanna add something under this window. I wanna do something kinda of Home Alone style and put a bunch of random bricks that he'll have to walk over, which is only slightly evil, but the whole point of this is to deter people from breaking in, so. I hired a real burglar, not my friend, to, to break into this room, so we're gonna see if it actually works. But we got a bunch of traps to build first. So the first thing I wanna build is a Lego turret that actually tracks people and can aim and shoot. So we basically need a mechanism that's going to store energy and then release it really fast, powered by Lego motors. So basically if we take this as our like firing pin and we wrap a rubber band around it, this will create the barrel where it's actually going to fire. Then we just need to cover the top of the barrel with some pieces like this. Now if we got our little firing pin in there, this thing can go back and be released. And then if we had this special wheel piece right here, when the motor turns, it'll actually push this piece back. And when it gets to a certain point, it will release it just like that. How does it work? This worked like eight minutes ago. I told you guys, it's a rough prototype. It's not entirely working. Now if we just build up this little thing that will catch it a little bit stronger, let's see. So we just need to build up a quick gravity fed magazine and I think this will work. So I built up this magazine, it holds around 30 rounds and we just snap it in place. And then, I mean, it technically worked. Problem is I can't really see what's going on and I'd like to see why the firing pin isn't, like why there's too many going in there. Maybe I shoot it in slow-mo and then we can see. So looking at the slow motion footage, the first issue I solved was just adding a simple cover because they were bouncing out and flying everywhere. And then the other one is when this thing's actually firing, and you have it at an angle, which the turret is gonna be at an angle because it's gonna have motors that move it all around, firing pin moves back far enough to allow two to fall down into the chamber before it stops them, making it shoot two at once, which is cool, but it causes jamming and other stuff like that. Because the ammunition is Lego Technic, it's the same size as a Technic beam, which is what the firing pin is. I'm just gonna rebuild this using an axle for the firing pin and hopefully that should fix the problem. Check it out, with this new pin, we can slide it through here, and now these things cannot fit back behind this yellow piece. Here we go. Dude, let's go. So the next step is to add Lego Mindstorms to this so we can move it around and actually code it to track targets. Plug in our motors, hook them up to this guy. Now we just need to make it move up and down and then rotate. And when we code this, you can tell this what to do. So to make it turn, I'm gonna attach a motor to this thing and that'll spin the gear, which will make it go like this. And then we'll add another motor to this axle to make it go up and down. We're also gonna need to build a camera into the base so that this thing can actually track people. So I just hooked this up to the motor and now the motor can control the spinning of this top piece, which will attach to the turret. So we can put this in the base. To make this thing hinge up and down, we're just gonna use a worm gear, I think, because if we hook it up to the motor, it'll actually make it so the weight of the turret won't affect how it stays up in the air, because with the worm gear, you can't turn the actual gear, you can only turn the worm gear. To connect them, I'm gonna slap these together. I just happen to need a medium motor, and there just happens to be one right there, just like that. Since it's a worm gear, it doesn't need to be that powerful because the worm gear carries so much torque. Oh yeah. Perfect, dude. All we gotta do for this is build up the base and then we can code it. To actually program the turret, I'm calling my friend Sten from Creative Mindstorms to help me out. He's extremely smart when it comes to programming. Do you know what we're doing right now? Of course I know what we're doing. We're making an awesome video for YouTube, sharing our Lego adventures. And he's done several projects with face tracking on his channel that I definitely recommend you check out. This is what the code looks like. I have no idea what any of it means. So I'm gonna let Sten explain how it works. <laughs> so the way this works is that both the Mindstorms and the GoPro are connected to a laptop with the laptop running the actual code. And the GoPro is just always looking for a person to step into the room. As soon as it detects someone, you will see that the status changes to tracking and it will grab the X and Y coordinates of the person's chest. And now it will move towards the person until its angle is spot on. At this point, the crosshair turns green and the turret starts shooting. Working. It's tracking me. Yeah, it does go up. <laughs> Doesn't see me. Oh shoot. Oh. Okay. <laughs> that actually works. Let's go. 
Now we have to do is set it up in the room and set the perimeters to be precise so that it actually aims. Okay, so we've got our turret here. As you can see, it has a lot of room. I think this holds like 120 rounds, so that's sick. So I'm gonna set this up in this corner and this should track the guy coming in and it should move around. And then we'll plug in the GoPro to the computer and hopefully this will deter him enough from stealing the safe. And the safe I'm actually using for this is utilizing the old unbreakable safe mechanism. And if you randomize the combination, this thing cannot slide back in to unlock the safe. So these pieces will still be in the wall. So all you have to do is line these up using the secret combination. And all three of those slide into place like that. Obviously I'm not leaving instructions for this. I don't even think they're gonna be able to open the safe, but that's okay, that's more security. We got this $800 Zebra Batman collectible minifigure we're gonna put in here. And then if they're able to steal this, I'm gonna give it away to one of you guys. But if they're not, I get to keep it. I doubt they're gonna be able to get it open. The next thing I wanna build are some bear traps over in this area here so that it'll actually act as a deterrent and basically stop it from <laughs> wanting to come this way. So I've got some pieces here and my plan is to build a bunch of little sharp spikes like that. So I have a bunch of these little clicky hinges and my thought is if I just connect them like that, I can build a bunch of these spikes and put them on here and then create two little half circles that will clamp shut and have claws on them if you step in it. That way it'll be dangerous. Check it out. That looks kind of painful to be honest. We just gotta build a bunch of these and connect them end to end. Number one. Okay, now we have all these, as you can see. And that's as far as my plan went. So, <laughs> just gotta come up with a mechanism that when you step on it, it will snap and close around you. This is really hard. Basically, I'm building these hinges on each side that will actually make this thing fling up, but we need tension, so I'm using these rubber bands, and that is not the best thing to use on these. It's all trial and error, basically. It's not gonna sit flat, exactly. I'm just gonna keep building and see what I can come up with. Finally got the mechanism here, check this out. You take this and you set it by pushing this down and then you just pop this over and snap it into place. And that holds. And then as soon as you click this thing here, it releases it. So we're walking, we're walking and, oh, that got me, yeah. I'm so proud. Hey, it's a deterrent, okay? It's not gonna actually stop it. It's great, okay? I'm, I'm, ha I'm happy with that, I'm proud of it. Why do I keep saying this like it's not true? <laughs> we just have to build more so I can be proud of those too. Perfect. So, we got some bear traps. We can install these right here. And the way you actually prime these to install them is you actually just pull this this way and then you click this in and you do the same on the other side. Sometimes it, it snaps open and hits you in the eye. But uh, if you wear eye protection, which I'm totally not doing, then we just prime this thing in place like that. So anyone who touches this will set it off and it'll like that. <laughs> nice. Okay. And I also built a bunch of these tiny little ones, which basically will just be sharp to step on. So I'm gonna scatter these around so it'll be harder to avoid them. This is so evil. Hopefully he'll step on one of them. <laughs> and after the bear traps, we come around to this little passageway where I want to install a laser tripwire system. I have an idea of how we can actually make this work with Lego Mindstorms, and I think it'll be really cool. And to do that, we're gonna need an EV3, a laser, and one of these little EV3 light sensors. And then if we go to this page on here, we can see what is coming in. As you can see, it says zero PC PCT. I don't know what that means. So right now it's measuring the ambient light intensity. So if we shine this laser at it, should go up, there we go. So we can actually use this to make our security system by coding it so that when it senses the ambient light level drop below 90, we can get it to trigger another function in the room. It works, that's awesome. So now we just need to build a bunch of little angleable mirrors so we can actually reflect the laser to make a long grid that goes back and forth. The best way I found of doing that are these little one inch sticking mirrors. Then we can connect the ball joint to something else and this can now angle. And we can build a bunch of these to attach to the passageway in the room. And then we just need to build a simple stand for these to attach together so they can sit at the end. All right, so we got our sensor and our laser here. One of the important factors in this is that we have a fog machine because it's not gonna work without fog. So I'm gonna put this at the very end and the laser at the very beginning. And the goal is to get this to bounce back and forth to get to the sensor. <laughs> that light keeps turning off. So I built up a bunch of these little mirror things. Some of them have magnets on the back so we can stick them to these. So now we just gotta install the rest of these and make a complicated course that'll hit the sensor at the end. And while I'm doing that, I can tell you about this video sponsor, Shopify. Shopify is an all-in-one commerce platform that makes it really easy for you to sell your products online and in person. Their easy to use platform lets you customize your storefront to fit your vibe. And if you're not quite sure what you like, they have a selection of ready-made themes to choose from. What I like about Shopify is how beginner-friendly it is. 
but they don't short you on the features either. All we're basically doing is just shining this where I want to put the next one. It's a little difficult. They provide all the tools and resources that would usually just be reserved for like large businesses to people like you and me who might just be starting out. They also have integrations on all the major social media platforms like YouTube and Instagram so you can promote your products to your friends and followers. <laughs> this is so dope. Dude, this is gonna be so difficult. Shopify is empowering millions of entrepreneurs, and they all use Shopify to sell their products. Heck, even the site where I sell this dope merch is powered by Shopify. And while we're talking about security, Shopify has built-in fraud analysis, which uses machine learning algorithms to detect if an order could potentially be fraudulent. Uh, I tripped it. I used Shopify last year to sell a limited drop of these Ublot crash test dummies, and it went super well. I think the vibe really matches my channel. As you can see, now we just need to make it so that it lines up with our ambient light sensor right there, that will trigger it. So if you want to kickstart your new business idea, you can get a free trial by going to shopify.com slash bricksigns or by clicking the first link down in the description. You say Shopify for sponsoring this video. This thing's ready to go. So now it's time to build the next security measure. The next thing I want to build is a 911 dialer and a door lock that'll be attached together so that he won't be able to escape to the rest of the studio. And I figure the best way to do that is to grab a flip phone with actual buttons and then I just program the speed dial to call me or the authorities and there we go. So we just need to come up with a really simple robot that will receive a signal and then speed dial. Grab another EV3 here, and then we'll just use a single motor like this. Then we just need like a simple little finger on this that will make it rotate and go, do this. This, oh, oh. This isn't very sophisticated though, so we'll just need to fix this. So I'm gonna build up a simple case for it using actual Lego. That way we can kind of mount it all together on the wall. Okay. You know what? I need a tiny motor. I know I've stolen from you before, but this time I really need it. There we go. I've determined this motor will be better because we can just attach it right here. We should attach two of these little Technic 1x3s. We're going to snap that into our motor. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not what we want. We just got to build this up. And then to actually be able to attach this to the wall, I'm gonna use these pieces, and that way we can put a tiny little Technic screw into it, into the wall. This thing's looking super fly though. I think we just need to add some cool details and then work on the code to make it actually link with the other stuff. All right, so we got this guy here and I installed in this a couple of these little Technic holes so we can attach it up here on the wall. And then if we grab one of our tiny little Technic fitting screws that I've discovered. We should then be able to screw this into the wall. You can see it doesn't damage the piece, but it just goes right in and holds it on. And this is right above the laser tripwire system, so this will be linked to that via Bluetooth. And then next we gotta build the door lock that will attach to the door and lock whenever it's tripped so that he won't be able to walk right into the studio. So I kind of measured out the door jam and created like a beveled Technic mold that'll fit around it. So we just need to come up with some sort of latch that's motorized that actually can lock the door shut so that this piece can't move. Too big. Do we have another? We'll fix that. All right, now I can put this together. Okay, so right now, what I have is essentially it goes back, it goes forward. I added two because I figured having two would make it stronger and less easy to break because they're not super strong this way. Now I gotta lock these in on the top so they don't flop around. So I'm adding a few of these pieces, I think. We'll go all the way through, push it hard, goes all the way across. Probably something longer. Uh, I don't know, maybe if I do this. This is called engineering. You just figure out what works and if it doesn't work, you're like, oh crap. And if it does work, you're like, heck yeah. And it's a pretty great experience overall. Check this out. Boom. Now this thing can't move up and down. We go back and forward. And you can see here, if we go back to our yellow model, which we've molded around the door, this has the exact same form factor. All right, and here we have our door lock. We can plug that into here, because it's gonna be running off the same EV3 as this. So this thing will attach to the wall here, and this one will attach to the door. And we'll screw this in using the same screws because it's built of Technic. As you can see, this thing will lock. Now this one, we just put right here, match it up just like that. Cool. So it's not the best door lock, but uh, kind of works. Now that we got this pathway done, the next thing you want to build is a trip wire. We'll attach that to a camera so that it takes the guy's picture. So I have here an EV3, shocker, hooked up to a button sensor. So essentially the plan is to have a little pin that pushes on this button. And I've done this before on this channel. So we just need to build a simple thing to hold a pin in place here. So now we have this thing and when we pull it, as you can see, it releases the button. Now we just need to take our invisible fishing line and tie an end to this around. And then as soon as somebody trips it, 
and we'll just take the other end of this fishing line and tack it to the wall. But when the tripwire is triggered, I want it to send a signal to this EV3, which will be attached to this GoPro, and it'll make it take a picture of whoever's standing where the tripwire is. So I came up with this thing, and essentially, you slide your GoPro in, and when the motor turns, it will snap a picture. We just gotta build a frame up around this, and then make it angleable so we can attach it to the wall. All right, now we can test it out, make sure it works. Say cheese. That was the worst photo ever. And now, we just basically have to build these together so we can mount it on the wall using the same screws. I built a bunch out of Lego bricks, and so you can see it's got like a lens on it, just to make it look more like a security camera. And then I built the hanger, which basically slides in there. And we can screw this into the wall. This should hold it up pretty decently. All right, so we got our tripwire, and I wanna put this right around the corner from the turret, hide this over here so that the pin will pull out, and the other end of it will just tack to the wall. This around here. He's gonna come around trying to get away from the turret. He's not gonna see this coming, and then he's just gonna walk right into it. And it, I just triggered that. See, you don't even know it's there. This is our camera. We put in our GoPro. So we'll put this up here, like, like this. We'll put it like this. And then we'll put on our camera, just like that. And now we'll grab our EV3, plug it into this. And this will receive a Bluetooth signal from the tripwire. So we can just hide this in the ceiling up here. So now it's finally time to test it with the burglar and see how this thing does to protect the safe. So it's basically a pass fail. If he actually doesn't trigger anything, he'll be able to steal it, take it back through the room, if he can do that. If he can't, then I get to keep it and I'm not giving it away. So with all the traps built, I added one final touch and we were ready to go. Okay, so we got everything set up. It took like 15 minutes to get everything programmed. I'm telling him to enter through the window. So he should be entering the room right now. Uh, I cannot see the cameras. Did he make it past everything? I have no idea where he is. Oh, come on, where is he? So I couldn't get a live feed from my cameras. But you can see here he trips the laser system, but the door has already been locked. And the emergency dialer isn't dialing. Everything went down. The turret isn't working for some reason. I don't even know if he made it past the lasers. So burglary attempt number one revealed several issues with the system. There was one trap that actually worked. But unfortunately, the camera angle wasn't lined up, so we got a really nice picture of burglar number one's feet. He did try his hand at safe cracking for a while, but I think he got a little frustrated. At this point, I tried to reboot the turret from outside the room, but nothing I did was working. So I gave him a hint. I didn't say you had to open the safe. Oh. And let him walk out with the safe. So while that was a good test run, I went ahead and hired two more burglars for the next day so I would have enough time to hopefully fix everything. I decided to hire two more because some things didn't work and I wanted to get a chance to fix them. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. Unfortunately, I can't view any of the cameras in this room so I won't be able to live view what's actually happening in the room. So after 15 minutes setting everything up in order again, it was time for round two. And I gotta say, I really thought these bear traps would be working better. You can see here, burglar number two presses up against the door, which moves the mirrors just enough to trip the system. And then the 911 dialer starts dialing my phone, and she just failed her first attempt. Well, she lost. <laughs> nice try. I gave burglar number two a couple more tries, but she just couldn't make it past those lasers. <gasps> Dang it! It's the lasers that keeps getting them, because every time... See, like literally, <laughs> again. I don't like this game. Which means it was finally up to burglar number three to get past the lasers and steal the minifigure. And I love how he just casually ignored my take off your shoes sign. <laughs> I'm actually so happy to see somebody finally made it to the turret. He also tripped the tripwire, which took a nice picture of his back. I really should have angled that thing better. And finally he'd reached the safe. He really did take a while trying to safe crack this thing. Oh boy but it probably didn't help when he broke off the wheel connected to the mechanism. Still, he worked on cracking it for quite a good while before finally realizing he could just pick up the safe and take it. Unfortunately, he was just a little too fast for the turret. 
and he was so close to getting out with it, but he got a little careless. Since he was so close, I decided to give him a few more tries to see if he could actually do it. And he kept getting tripped up on the lasers because the vibrations from his jumping would cause the mirror to move and the beam to break. On his final attempt, he made it over the lasers, past the turret, and grabbed the safe. And after a few final jumps, he was home free, and he made it through the LEGO security system. So while building a LEGO security system is a little unorthodox and not extremely practical, after some bug fixes and stuff, it worked pretty well. But they were able to steal the safe a couple times, so, as promised, I'm going to give away the expensive Batman minifigure that's in here. So if you guys want to win this LEGO Batman minifigure, all you have to do is follow me on Instagram, like and comment Batman on the newest post with a picture of this. And I'll choose a winner to ship this to in one week. My Instagram button is right here. Thanks for watching. See ya!